Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina. Jackie, 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 Jackie. Jagga, 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 jagga. I think it's safe to say that I am the sponsorship queen. I have no regrets about that. I mean, just saying, I don't. I get a lot of great opportunities, but I think that one thing that people don't realize is that I actually say no a lot more, by far way more than I say yes to some of the opportunities I get. There are just some sponsorships I never, ever, ever, ever take. Shout out to my girl, Hey Paris. I love her. She's one of my favorite story time YouTubers. You guys should definitely check her out. She's freaking hilarious. She did this video a long time ago and I have a whole list and this was one of the videos that I've been wanting to do. So in typical Jackiana fashion, we just gonna get ready and talk crap with one another. Sounds good? All right, pull up a chair. So I'm priming my skin. You guys, I used a moisturizer today that was like, greasier than normal. So I'm gonna try to go a little matte today. That was my NARS Pour and Shine Control Primer. I'm gonna follow that up with a little Farsali Skin Tune Blur. Oh, that is not a booger. Whatever was dangling next to my nose. That was from my primer. Before we get into my little list, cause there's definitely some ahas and some ohs. The first thing that I think we should definitely talk about is things change, industries change, people's opinions change. And sometimes I feel like people forget that. Like someone will try to clock me for something that I said in a 2009 video. And I'm like, sweetie, that was a decade ago. I'm allowed to change my mind. Just like you're allowed to fix the way you do your brows. Okay, we all got choices. Thank you. Also, I feel like sponsorships are, like there's something out there for everyone, okay? So just because I'm not a fan, this is my Laura Mercier translucent powder. You guys know she loves to set her primer. Just because something does not work for me, it doesn't mean that this is like a way to bash anybody else who does this. Nah, that's not where I'm going with this. For foundation, I'm gonna mix Sheer Glow from NARS and Natural Radiant Longwear. This is a really good combo. Contrary to what most might believe, I do have standards, you guys, and there actually are some things that I have to walk away from. The first sponsorship I would probably and have yet to ever do is teeth widening. I think it's pretty obvious why. My teeth are already white. Nothing annoys me more when a brand reaches out and they wanna pay me for something that like I already have for free. Nothing irritates me more. Nothing grinds my gears more than when brands don't do the research. I feel like these brands are just getting lazy. Like they're just getting lazy and they think just because you're an influencer and just because they have the money or just because they meet your budget rate or your requirements that you're just supposed to automatically do the sponsorship and it's like, no. No. You but well, you hesitated. You thought about I it. I didn't first. hesitate because that should have been the question. It's not like a car where you have the money for it and then you get it. That's not how sponsorships work. I think that's what they're trying to do with the industry because I see it. I see it a lot. There are definitely some brands that are like, oh yeah, well you know we have the money and it's like okay, but Jackie doesn't want to do the product. Like I think that people forget I actually have to like and the product has to be sellable. So if I already have white teeth, how's that sellable? It doesn't make any sense. I don't think at home teeth whitening kits are dangerous, but maybe I'm in the minority and that I feel like you should just like go to a dentist. You should just like go to a dentist. Like what happened to the dentist? Especially if you're gonna do something like teeth whitening cause teeth whitening is a pretty, you know, like that's a pretty vain thing. So if you have the money to spend, go and do it by professional. That's your teeth. Like you only get like one set of teeth. I mean, you can buy a new one, but then you gonna have another problem. And veneers ain't cheap, sweetie. I know y'all see them Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde before and after pictures on Instagram and them them rates for veneers okay i'm gonna take the milani make it last setting spray i've been doing like setting spray before i kind of like mixing it in my foundation i've been really enjoying that method lately this is the stay woke concealer from oma beauty in the shade brown sugar t4 we're gonna do some correcting the thing that scares me a little bit about teeth whitening kits is the fact that like they're so readily available now like every brand has a teeth whitening kit you don't even really know if that's safe you don't even know like who in the hell made this i knew we had gone too far as a society when they started doing teeth whitening at the same places they do lash extensions. Am I missing something? I feel like it shouldn't be that way. One time when I was in high school, now mind you, this was like over 15 years ago. Don't roast me, okay? When I was in high school, they had Colgate white strips and like I would even trust 
that. I understand teeth whitening is expensive, but I feel like the next best thing would be going to your local drugstore, to your local Target, and getting like a Colgate because you know that if it's like a Colgate or a Crest or Crest White Strips, that's what Crest. Was it Crest White Strips? Yeah, it was Crest White Strips. I use the Crest White Strips when I was like 15, 16, and I'm pretty sure they probably still sell them. You can go get them at like Target. I see them all the time at Target, and do that before you trust these Instagram codes. I I get asked, how are your teeth white? How? Why? What do you mean how? What do you mean how? When people want white teeth, they get them white. If you have a dentist, ask them about teeth whitening. Like that's what they get paid for. And if you can't do that, that ain't no problem. Go get Crest White Strip, or do some contouring. I remember them being like 50, 60 Zoolas. I don't know if that's on par with what those little teeth whitening kits at home will cost you, but the cheaper the kit is, the more likely you're ripping off your enamel. So just please be careful, please tread lightly. There's really like no way to verify like if those teeth whitening kits are safe. I will just stick to my Arm & Hammer toothpaste, my little baking soda, that helps too. I talked about that in a video a long time ago when we were kids. My mom used to put baking soda on our toothpaste like once a week and girl, that worked. So I'll stick to that and using a straw and staying away from dark drinks because that seems to work just fine. It's funny how I can like really concentrate on my makeup when I don't talk. <laughs> I took that same concealer and I did some correcting under my eyes. Let me know if you guys want me to do a more in-depth, like, you know, I did I did why your foundation routine sucks. I can also do a whole spotlight on concealers alone. Holla at me in the comments if you wanna see what's good. This is Brown Sugar T34, also from Oma Beauty. So the next big no-no in Sponsoredville, oh is diet tea. Tea's cool. Teas are great American pastime. And if you're on the other side of the pond, you really love a good tea, mate. Don't shout. Rubbish. Like seriously, has anybody ever lost 10, 15, 20 pounds off tea alone? No exercise, just tea. I'm just constantly hearing people say, this is the same stuff my Jamaican mama gives me, or this is the same stuff that you can get at Walgreens for five bucks. Like there's too many alternatives out there that basically act like laxatives, AKA they fluff flush you out. Okay, and if you're not flush, let's talk about that. Let, let's discuss that first. And then also I just feel like they're kind of corny, like, okay, I'm gonna go stand by my stove that I touch once every six months and pretend like I just made a kettle, which like, I don't, I like tea. Like I actually do drink tea at home. Lovely tea here on YouTube. She's another YouTuber, obviously. She's another YouTuber who does like lifestyle. She does like social commentary and popular culture and gossip. She's basically in the gossip genre, except she actually shows her face and isn't a copycat. <clears throat> it isn't paid by other people. I love her. She actually has personality. She brings perspective. She says things that sometimes people don't want to hear. Love that about her. T is like her nickname and she ended up coming out with her own line of teas. That I would promote. I would promote that, but I wouldn't do it for payment. Like I would just drink it and like shout her out. Cause actually funny enough, I need to put that on my list of things to do. I really want to try her teas. Once again, it would make sense. Like I'm already relatively pretty fit. Like I don't know how I would actually influence someone to do something like buying a diet tea. I just feel like no one would buy it. I feel like no one would buy into it. I feel like there's a new diet tea company popping up every week. They're definitely trying to cash in. They're not slick, I see what they're doing. Like if you're into it, that's fine, but I kind of feel like we're post, I feel like we're past that phase. Remember when like Instagram, like that was the really the only thing you can make money off of? There are so many other flourishing, budding opportunities out there. I just don't feel like tea makes the most sense for me. Like for me, it has to make sense. You know what I mean? Because I want a little bit extra highlight, I'm gonna take my NARS concealer in the shade Caramel. This is obviously not my shade, but that's the point. Just for a little brightening, 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 brightening. Tea only makes sense, one, if it's your brand and you actually know for a fact it works. Two, if you make it easy and accessible for people, like don't jack up the price like four times, sis, just because you got 50,000 followers, Come, bring it down a notch. You're gonna 10, bring it down to like a three. And if you're in fitness, if you're in the business of fitness, if you are a fitness influencer, if you are documenting a weight loss journey and you're actually using it, then I think by all means, like if it makes sense for you as a brand, then do it. That's slightly different from, you know, already being toned and fit and then all of a sudden you're 
Girl, we know you're not using it. I really hope that this doesn't become a video where people jump in the comments and feel like they have to defend things that they like. This isn't what this isn't what it's about. Please spare me. Because believe it or not, I think people are curious. Like, what would you take on as a partnership? Or, you know, what makes you say no or decline a sponsorship or an opportunity? And also for someone who's never done sponsored content, like this video may be helpful for someone. I want all my videos to be helpful in general. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you baking. <laughs> I'm not even gonna attempt to try to do my brows while talking, so we're just gonna skip right ahead through there as well. Okay, back to business. It's eye base time. I'm gonna take a little bit of my Too Faced Multi Sculpting Born This Way Concealer and prep my lids. All right, hear ye, hear ye, listen up, people. I'm not doing any more Smash and Fova sponsorships. Now, if you can put two and two together, I'm not gonna say the name, but it rhymes with Smash and Fova, so we're gonna call it Smash and Hova. Smash and Fova, Splash and Hova, whatever you wanna call it. I did a whole in-depth video on this one. I like their clothes. They're cheap, they're accessible. They knock off everything a little bit too much sometimes. But I just really, really had a problem with the the image. They, they have an image problem there. I try to give brands the benefit of the doubt. If someone doesn't know any better, then that's one thing, right? How can people expect so much of you, right? But when I found out this brand had been like, you know, privately reached out to by another influencer or multiple different influencers about their image problem. And I'm not gonna get too in depth because like I said, I've already done the video on this one. So you need to go ahead, you need to go ahead and watch it. And so a lot of people were like, well, you work with them, blah, blah, blah. See, the thing that I have a problem with is people pick and choose when they wanna complain about things. Okay, so for example, if I had worked with a company and I had said nothing, I would have been a hypocrite. I would have been every name in the book. I would have been a sellout. I would have been every name in the book. If I was still working with them and then I took a moment and said, actually, I'm noticing this. Let's do something about it. I'm still a hypocrite. Crit. I'm confused. Do you want people to be unbiased even with money or not? You really have to pick one because there is definitely going to be a time. Maybe you've accepted payment or maybe you've worked with a company that isn't so stellar. I'm sure at your job, your boss probably has said some racially insensitive things or has probably said something that could have been discriminatory. Or maybe you have a coworker that does something that's not quite legal. Do you say stuff? Mm. Do you quit your job? No. Do you always agree with some of the things your colleagues do? Probably not, but that doesn't necessarily mean you can't be the changes you wanna see in the industry. I'm gonna take Miss Rustic Glam from Kristen Dominique. I'm gonna start with suede. That looks like a really good, that looks like a really good crease color. And you know we love a crease color. We love a crease color over here. Sometimes I think people think I function like Trend Mood. I love Trend Mood by the way, but Trend Mood is a around the clock service that I'm pretty sure is not even just one person. They find beauty news and beauty launches and they post about them all throughout the day. I don't function like your mood I don't always know when brands are doing something that maybe isn't the biggest or best PR move. I don't follow every brand that I work with on Instagram. So sometimes someone else may catch something before me or something could completely slip through the cracks and I won't know. So sway, we blend it out in our grease. Honestly, sometimes I feel like I don't know if people just expect that I'm supposed to know everything about every single brand. I don't. Do I sometimes catch on a little bit late? Sure, I'm human. I work with multiple different companies. There are multiple different launches. There's different scandals. It's a lot. It's a lot to keep up with, even for the average consumer. So when I did that video, a couple of people were like, well, you should know better, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, sure, you could say I should know better, but I didn't, but I didn't. So when I found out, I was like, wait, why y'all Instagram? Why y'all Instagram look? like this. And then also you have to realize you guys, when I work with brands, I'm looking for a pattern. Sometimes I think they reach out to people like me and other influencers like me because they're trying to be the change that people are asking for. So another great example of this is PR trips. Oh, everybody's favorite conversation is about PR trips. And I remember a time where brands used to get roasted, roasted, roasted. They used to get obliterated for not inviting black influencers. And then when they invite black influencers, you get mad at the black influencers because they're taking sponsorships and trips from brands that don't represent, I mean, which like, which one is it? People are so exhausting, people are so exhausting. Do you want black representation or not? What do, what do you want, what do you want, what do you want, what do you want? 
What do you want? Do you want those opportunities to be open to everyone or no? Because it sounds like you don't. Or it sounds like you want it for yourself. A great example of this was another fashion brand. Never heard of them before. They had a swimsuit line. So they were like, hey, we'd love to send you some clothes, blah, blah, blah. And they actually had cute swimwear. And I, you know, took a little creep over on their Instagram. And I personally wasn't a fan of what I saw. And I sent them a really professional response. And I said, you know what? I really appreciate you offering, but I don't see, you know, uh, where's the melanin in your pants? Like, I don't really see, I don't really feel like this is on brand for me. It doesn't really feel like it would be a good fit. Like a lot of my followers look like me and I don't see that reflected on your page. They were like, actually, that's the reason why we reached out to you because we want to change that. I told them, you know what? I really respect that. Thanks for the taking the feedback and not taking it personal. Holla at me in six months. Holla at me. Let's see if you actually are changing things. Holla at me in six months and we'll talk. But if I see that a brand is getting that feedback and they're not doing anything with it. You know, we could settle it however you want to settle it. We could talk about it or we could fight it out. I'm with whatever. While we take Wonderlust, this is a really nice chartreuse silvery green. I'm gonna pop that onto my lid. Oh, that's so pretty. A lot of us on social media are giving brands free consulting, free marketing plans, and either they care or they don't. Next, I'm gonna take the Chroma Crystal Top Coat. I've never used these before from the Tasha Denona. These are really pretty. It is a duochrome top coat. I guess it's like a pigment. I just wanna add some, ooh. That's pretty. Some dimension <gasps> to this green. Oh, that is so pretty. Sometimes I feel like people aren't honest about representation and beauty because once we finally get it, people still complain or they just critique the influencer and find fault in them. And it's like, honestly, you really should feel more some type of way that someone's being paid and not saying anything versus them being like, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, pause the check, so pause the check. So thank you, the checks are cute. Now that I'm on the inside, here's what I think you should be doing. Sometimes to be the change you wanna see in the industry, you really do gotta be on the inside. I'm gonna take this Game of Thrones, the Night King liner that I got from that Urban Decay collection they came out with. I'm gonna line my bottom lash line. I wanted something blue. Definitely blue, da ba dee da ba die. If I was green, I would die. I'm gonna take Evil Eye, this blue here. I don't like that name, Kristen. I'm scared. I feel like I'm gonna have to pray now. <laughs> but it's just a cobalt blue, a matte cobalt blue, and I'm gonna blend that along my bottom lash line. Well, 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 look what we have here. Yeah. That is really, wow, that is a blue, oh my God. I'm gonna buff this out with a slightly fluffier brush. This is from Zoeva, I like these brushes. This is the 225 Lux Eye Blender. I just like it because it's pink. I'm gonna just start buffing and roughing and a tough For my lashes, I'm going to throw on the INV KPE, I, girl, this name, it is the style 121 from this collection. Ooh, I love a fresh pair of these lashes. It's lash time, it's lash time. Now this is actually one of those things that as a YouTuber, you might not really see the problem with this, but it was it was actually some of the perspectives that I've seen you guys, cause I'm not gonna say who does it, it is a thing. <laughs> Sometimes we gotta come up with new creative ways to talk about sponsored products, okay? I'ma just keep it real. Sometimes you start running out of ideas, girl. You start trying to integrate as best as you can, sis. You call yourself doing a favorites video. I totally get it. But the problem is if you're talking about products that you organically really love, it doesn't really make sense to plug in a sponsorship. Then that experience taints the whole video for the user, you know? And I honestly, I would have never thought of it that way because there's so many products that are favorites that I've worked with and I have a, a working relationship relationship with the brand and that like I would definitely take a sponsorship for it because I love them already. Some things are hands off and some things are just like, okay, nah, bro. It was honestly just based on how I saw other people get, getting roasted for it. So I was like, I'm not gonna be the one. I am not the one. If you're paying me, please do it for something else. Cause my heart ain't doing no favorites. And if you're paying me, do it for something else. Oh baby, I don't wanna sponsor favorites.
Yes, I am a retired beatbox set. I'm gonna throw on bronzer when my lash glue dries. This is my Prime Beauty bronzer. I'm letting my lash glue dry. So I'm getting down to the last two things I wanna talk about. I, I ain't doing no fitness sponsorships, man. Like, I'm just not the one. I'm just not the one. Call Bundle of Britney, sis. Like, she's actually good at that and she's actually athletic. I'm not. Could I be in 10 years? I don't know. What if I have like a quarter midlife crisis and I decide I wanna be a triathlon athlete? <laughs> got places to go girl dry I'm gonna throw on some ABH brow gel my brows look a little thin today what am I going through I swear there's this one brush that freaking disappears every time I sit down and get ready to use it where'd you go I miss you so seems like it's been forever since you've been gone I found it <coughs> <coughs> Also, I'm kind of iffy on this one only because it would be another like results driven fitness health stuff that I'd have to ingest driven type of industry. And I've actually promoted them before. I wouldn't anymore though, but I wouldn't do vitamins because I just don't know how to show receipts on that. I like to be able to show you guys good before and after. I love to be able to show you guys a good progress. And I just don't necessarily know if you can do that with all vitamins. You kind of can. This Morphe M501, ugh. I know they make some questionable decisions, but I'm not getting rid of this brush. Find me a dude. While I throw out my falsies, let's talk about do's and don'ts of sponsorships, okay? For sponsorships, call this laziness, call this whatever you want, but it has to be an easy sell, okay? So don't call me to sell easy bake ovens. Don't call me to sell lawnmower. Don't call me to sell a video game. Don't call me to sell your sister's butter pecan popcorn recipe. I respect it, but it ain't me. I can honestly talk about makeup with my eyes closed. Like I'm gonna use those products and talk about them for free anyway. Which brings me to another point. Would I use it for free? Would I use this product if I wasn't necessarily paid for it? That's a big question. That's a big question. That is what will make something an easy sell. If it's, if it's a product that I would use anyway, then <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, you can pay me. Calm down, di dial it down. Not every day take money for every product. That doesn't necessarily mean that that will automatically grant you a sponsorship. I'm just saying that that's generally like how I like to look at it. Years ago, I used to have a very tight, strict, only, 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 only beauty sponsorships. But then I kind of thought about it and it's like, I don't necessarily only want to be known for beauty. And like, I don't want to be boxed in. I've worked with companies that sell like menstrual discs. I've worked with a very popular company here on YouTube where you can listen to books. Now there are sometimes sponsorships where I like the product, don't necessarily love it. Let's be very clear and let's also be very honest. You cannot love every product that you like. You just cannot love every product that you like. It's not realistic and it's not even like, like I would be a liar to sit here and be like, I love this product. <sighs> I will always like the products that I talk about or I'm paid to promote on my channel. Also, I would never use a product that doesn't work. I'm gonna take this Alomar Cosmetics Blush Trio. I think this is the medium one. This is the medium tan, yeah, yeah. We're gonna take Toasted, nice and pink. It's so funny to me. I don't know if people do this on purpose, but like I'll post an ad and someone in the comments will be like, do you really like this product? Huh? And I'm like, you really think I'm a lie in the caption, but then tell the truth and like, why would I do that? Products don't just stop working because the person was paid to promote them. I'll tell you my two non-negotiables with sponsorships, and then I'm gonna wrap this video up. But first, I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna apply the In Light Powder from Ms. Danessa Myricks in the shade Heaven Scent. Scent from heaven. How about scent from the kitchen, girl? I'm hungry. Look at how pretty. Look at her. Ooh. <laughs> It's so icy. Maybach music. Oh my God, that's so pretty. Now the one thing that I don't do with sponsor videos or just brands in general, cause y'all need to, y'all need to stay in your lane and let us the experts here. Let stay in your lane and let us do what we do best. I don't like when a brand tries to get me to promote a product that I don't like. Stop forcing it, leave me alone. You don't just get Jackie Ina's seal of approval just because you can meet Jackie Ina's required rates. It's not how it works. I know I touched on that earlier, but I'm just reiterating it. It rarely happens happens like very rarely, but it happens. It definitely happens. I've definitely had some brands try it and they don't outright say it. Of course they don't say it. Of course they don't say we want you to lie about this product. That's not what they say. It's what they imply. Girls, you see all three million of these people that follow me? You know they'll roast me, right? And then they gonna roast you. But you're only gonna get 10% of the roast. I'm gonna get 90% of it. It ain't worth it. And you know what? Another thing that I'm gonna say, as much as people talk crap about the sponsored products that I promote, how many times have you ever seen someone say that those recommendations were bad? How many times you hear that? How many times you, you like the product, right? Okay. We're gonna spray it down with the Milani Make It Last matte spray again. 
To line my lips, I'm gonna use K-Liner from ColourPop. Stop sending me these dummy nails. Then I'm gonna take the Tinted Hue Stick in the shade Perk. This is actually my first time using it. Definitely too light for my complexion, but as a lippy though, it's a pretty light pink. Ooh, I actually really like that on my lips. I'm gonna take a gloss from Botan Beauty. They make some of my favorite glosses, you guys. They are African owned and they're also Muslim owned. The shade that I'm using is Lover's Lane. Oh, it smells so good. The last non-negotiable for me and my sponsor content is don't ask me to not disclose. Don't even ask me. It's not gonna happen. It's a done deal. It's a stupid question. Absolutely not. You can ask me in any different variation or way or scenario as you want. The answer will always be no. Always be no. My team, we actually ethically work with brands and we try to be as honest as possible. And as it relates to, you know, um, purposely bashing or, or talking negatively about the brands, you can never pay me to do that. I think that's stupid. And I always, always, always say no when brands say they don't want to disclose because in their head, they say, if you don't disclose, we will get more sales. And I just, I hit them with a big fat, that's not my problem. When you come to me as an influencer, I have a duty and a responsibility to be honest about that working relationship that I have with you. And I will never do anything to jeopardize that ever, ever, ever. There is no amount of money that could be enough to say, yeah, <laughs> I'll delete the description box, Just no. All right, you guys, so here's the final look. I really, really like the look that we pulled together with Rustic Glam. She was cute. The final takeaway that I want you guys to learn from this, everyone, consumers, as influencers, aspiring, you have the power. That's why brands come to you, whether you have a thousand followers or whether you have four million followers. Don't let that get to your head and also don't take that for granted. Hopefully you guys enjoyed hanging out with me today. Hopefully you'll enjoy another video, which I'll just conveniently place right here. And what you can do is if you wanna take too long and play games and you don't wanna click the next video, you can just look at my highlight. Why are you still here?